Hi biologists! Let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to use the light microscope and be familiar with its parts. Be able to understand the use and function of the transmission electron microscope. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? Well, it's straightforward enough. You have to know the parts of the light microscope and their functions. You have to understand the functioning of the transmission electron microscope. Let's go. Let's sort out microscopes by first looking at the light microscope. The light microscope is the most commonly used microscope in biology. Its function or its job is to magnify small specimens. It makes objects appear larger. It uses light to show the image. Depending on the model of microscope, this light might be from the light bulb, which comes on when you plug in the microscope. But equally well, a mirror might be used here to focus the light up through the specimen. What are the parts of the light microscope? The first part of interest is the eyepiece lens. The lens is a structure made of glass, rather like a magnifying glass. It is found inside the barrel of the microscope. The barrel of the microscope, so called because it's rather like the barrel of a gun. The next piece is called the nose piece. This can be rotated. And when it is rotated, the objective lens can then be moved into place. Again, a lens is rather like a magnifying glass. There are usually three objective lens, the low power lens, the medium power lens, and the high power lens. You might have some models of microscope in school with only two objective lenses. Now be very careful here. When you are naming the parts of the microscope, you must use the word objective lens. The reason being you want to distinguish this lens, the objective one, from the previous lens, which is the eyepiece one. Light microscopes are also called compound microscopes because they use two lenses. So we have to be able to distinguish between the two. The next part is the stage, rather like a shelf upon which you can put the object or the specimen that you are trying to magnify. The specimen can be held in place by means of clips. The coarse focus wheel can be used to bring the specimen roughly into focus. To fine tune the image and make it less blurry, one has to use the fine focus wheel. The condenser helps to focus the light from the mirror or the bulb up through the hole in the stage and up through the specimen. You can control the amount of light that comes up through the stage by means of a lever called an iris diaphragm. Sometimes this is just called a diaphragm, but I like to use the word iris diaphragm because it links in with the part of the eye. The iris of the eye controls the amount of light entering the eye. Here, the iris diaphragm lever will control the amount of light going up through the specimen that you're trying to examine. Don't forget, this is a light microscope. Not heavy. Get the joke? 
the light microscope is operated by using a lamp or a mirror depending on the model of microscope. Now don't forget there are several models of microscopes. These parts could be in different positions and look slightly different. So you're going to have to use your cup on to apply the labels based upon the picture of the microscope that you might be given in the exam. So the light microscope is also known as a compound microscope as we've said already because it uses two lenses, an eyepiece lens and an objective lens. The light microscope can magnify an image about a thousand times. So it makes an object appear a thousand times bigger. This sounds awfully impressive until we realize that there are even more powerful microscopes available. What are the functions of the parts of the light microscope? Don't forget when we are doing the functions, we must always use action words. We must use verbs. When we go down through the table of the various parts of the microscope and their functions, notice that all the words being used are all verbs. This is a vital point. So the function of the eyepiece is to magnify the, the image. It makes the image appear larger. The function of the nose piece is to rotate so that an objective lens can be used. The function of the objective lens, don't forget we must include the word objective, is that they magnify the image. The function of the stage is to hold the microscope slide. It is an action word. Do not say the stage is the place where you put the microscope slide or you put the microscope slide here. That's an entirely different answer. You haven't answered the function of the stage. You have just told me that you put the microscope slide there. Now, if you say that it acts as a place to put the microscope slide, that would be an entirely different answer because you are using an action word and you are giving a function. The stage clips hold the microscope slide in place. The function of the iris diaphragm is that it controls the amount of light passing through the slide. Remember, link that in with the part of the eye. The coarse focus wheel is used to make large adjustments large changes to the image to try and make it a little bit less blurry. Fine focus wheel is used to make small adjustments in image clarity, focuses it a little more sharply. And then the light source or the mirror will shine light up through the slide. So the total magnification of the microscope is you take the magnifying power of the eyepiece lens, perhaps it magnifies the object 10 times and makes it 10 times bigger, and you multiply that by the magnifying power of the objective lens. So if the objective lens will make an object look 10 times bigger and the eyepiece makes it look 10 times bigger, then the total magnification of the microscope is 10 multiply by 10 or 100. Now be very careful here. This is magnification. We are making objects appear larger. So we are going to multiply them. So the power of the eyepiece lens, if it makes something 10 times bigger, multiplied by the magnifying power of the objective lens. M for multiply, M for magnification. From experience, a common error made here is that people tend to add and they add 10 plus 10 giving a total magnification of 20, which is totally incorrect. 
Let's look at a few examples. If the eyepiece lens gives a magnifying power of 5 and the objective lens has a magnifying power of 10, then the total magnification is 5 multiplied by 10, which gives 50. The little x's here in front refer to the magnification of the lens in question. If the eyepiece lens magnifies an object 10 times and the objective lens magnifies it 10 times as well, then the total magnification is 10 multiplied by 10, which is 100. If the eyepiece lens magnifies an object 10 times and the objective lens magnifies it 40 times, then the total magnification is 10 multiplied by 40, giving you 400. Now, the electron microscope uses a beam of electrons instead of light. Electrons, in case you haven't done science before, are negatively charged particles. They are tiny particles. And these tiny particles are used by this electron microscope instead of a beam of light. There are different types of electron microscopes. The two main types are the transmission electron microscope, which is the one that we are interested in here, and the scanning electron microscope. Transition electron microscopes can also be called TEMs, and the other scanning electron microscope, an SEM. The transition electron microscopes use electrons and the electrons travel through the specimen. T for through, T for travel, T for transmission. So the electrons travel through the specimen showing internal T structure. Whereas in the scanning electron microscope, the electrons scan the surface, S for scan, S for surface, and they show a surface view. The transmission electron microscope is very powerful with high magnifications, much more powerful than the light microscope. It has the capacity of magnifying a specimen a million times. The image is produced on a screen, on a computer screen, or on a photograph. The transmission electron microscope gives very clear, high resolution. You can distinguish things very clearly. You can distinguish the cell membrane from the cell wall, perhaps. And it also gives rise to detailed images. And there you have it. Now that we have reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you use the light microscope and are familiar with its parts? Do you understand the use and function of the transmission electron microscope?